Hello butterflies, welcome back to the Mental Health Comic Verse. Welcome if it's your first time here. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Ruby. So before I get into the video, I just want to say to anyone who has been keeping up with my videos that cosplay is a hobby of mine and I may pop up with it from time to time, but for now I decided I really want to focus on the comic strips itself and just thoroughly going through the storylines in the way that I perceive them. Emphasis on this being my perception. Okay, so today I'm talking about the Hulk, Bruce Banner, and his journey in battling these two personalities and what it really means. So I will get into the Avengers Endgame at the end of the video, but first let's go through the comics because this is where we really see his mental struggles and his battles and attempted suicide, which they only briefly mention in Avengers. Firstly, who is the Hulk? Because I've heard people say that the Hulk is not Bruce Banner, he's another entity within Bruce, which I definitely do not agree with. <laughs> if you watch my videos regularly, then you know I'm all about tackling the subconscious, the shadow side, the demons, and the traumas that we don't want to face. So I see the Hulk as the shadow side of Bruce. So anytime I refer to the Hulk in this video, assume I'm also saying his subconscious or shadow side. The Hulk was the result of a gamma explosion, right? A very traumatic experience. The Hulk is really a representation of the physical reminder of a trauma that we have to live with, whether you were in a war, an abusive relationship, an abusive childhood, a natural disaster, a physical altercation with someone, you know, the list goes on and on. Traumas aren't always physical, so he can also be seen as a physical extension of his shadow side the raging aspect, which is the mental suppression that came from this trauma. So he's mad that he had to go through this, but he never put in the work to fully register the trauma and accept the rage as a natural response to what he went through. So instead, he keeps suppressing his rage and his shadow continues to just hulk out. And that's the cycle a lot of us get stuck in as well. You'll notice that the more Bruce tries to ignore Hulk, the more the Hulk acts out, which is exactly what our shadow self does. The more we suppress what we need to face and heal, the more our subconscious draws in situations and people who will reflect the shadow that you refuse to acknowledge. Our shadow wants love too, you know? They're just a result of our experiences, and when we demonize them, we're demonizing ourselves. So Bruce has always been ashamed of this rage within himself, so he tries to suppress it, except for when he wants to whoop some ass, then he wants to call on the Hulk and use him, right? And we clearly see this in Avengers Infinity War, when the Hulk refuses to come out because he's just like, nah, fuck you. You never want to show me love or acknowledge me until it's time to use me and then put me back in my little cage, right? No, I'm sick of you. I'm sick of it. Fuck you. So let's get into the comic strips. And remember, the Hulk means Bruce Banner's shadow self. So here we see the Hulk has hulked out. And now Bruce is left with the shame and guilt of what he has done. This is the continuous cycle that he goes through. He suppresses the Hulk and he's unable to face his traumas. So he remains in this victim mentality. And the answer is always simple, which is to go within, reflect, face your shadow. But most of us have a hard time even coming to that conclusion in the first place. It's definitely a journey, which is why we see Bruce just turning to drugs here, right? Put me on meds and calm me down. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm so angry. Tame me. So we see he's stuck in this loop of always blaming himself because all he can focus on is the destruction aspect. When he does try to think about the alternative here, he's too scared. He thinks, if I even think about the traumas and why I rage, then the Hulk is going to come out and rage more. So out of fear, he suppresses reflecting on why he has this rage. Kind of in the same way that we suppress our own shadow self in the fear that, oh, this is negative. We want to think positive thoughts only, so let me just not think about this because it's, it's negative, it's bad, right? So because he sees no way out in this mental and physical battle within himself, he puts a gun to his mouth and attempts suicide. I know it can be argued, well, if the Hulk isn't a separate entity, then why is Bruce trying to kill himself and the Hulk won't allow it? But if you think about it, our shadow side... It feels defeating to have all these dark thoughts going in a loop about ourselves and feeling like 
You can't escape yourself and you can't change. But the shadow is here to say, hey, deal with this so that you can live fearlessly and be the best version of yourself. I don't want you to die because I am you. I am a part of you. So I just want you to see me, not kill me. Next, I'm getting into The Incredible Hulk, Last Call. And in this comic, he calls the suicide prevention hotline. Bruce struggles heavily with blaming himself, as we see here. Even when Hulk isn't the one to directly cause harm, he still blames and shames himself as being the cause of everything going wrong. I want to take this time to remind you guys that there is a difference between shame and guilt. Guilt is necessary for us to feel the repercussions of our actions so that we can take accountability and don't repeat harmful actions in the future, right? Whereas with shame, you're continually reliving something you did in the past without forgiving yourself. I may make a video on shame versus guilt, but if this is something you are currently struggling with, make sure you take it upon yourself to YouTube the difference between the two and how to overcome that obstacle because that's a very important difference to distinguish. And I love that they inserted this little reminder here that suicide rates tend to spike during Christmas time, during the holidays. It tends to be that time of year for most people when they're reminded of how lonely they actually feel or just the stress of the season as a whole, right? It's supposed to be this loving, warm time, but for a lot of people, it's turned into a reminder of what they don't have. So Bruce goes on to tell us how he's attempted suicide many times, but the Hulk always ends up preventing it from happening. This is where he says, a lot of people think the Hulk is a personification of my rage, but I don't think so. I think he was the personification of my will to live, he says. This here is further proof to me that the Hulk banner shadow is saying, hey, I'm not actually angry. I'm not actually trying to hurt people. I just want you to see me. Acknowledge me, your trauma, your darkness, so that you can live freely, like I said earlier. Stop trying to run from me. I'm here to help you live. So look at me and give me love the same way you give love to the qualities that you deem worthy. I'm worthy too because I am a part of you too. Next, we get into the flashback of Bruce meeting his wife, Betty Ross. Again, here it's clear to me that Hulk isn't a separate entity because he's shown here as the mental aspect of Bruce shaming himself with negative self-talk. He's crushing on Betty and immediately his shadow goes from saying, you're sick, you're a freak, to, oh, you're too much of a gentleman to even make a move and do anything anyways. And when the conversation continues to go well, Hulk is in his head saying, well, she's going to realize you ain't shit anyways, and she'll end up breaking your heart. Just watch. This part really made me think of depression because no matter which way you try to look at it and spin it, there's this voice in your head shaming you and saying you're not worthy. And that's kind of the cycle of depression. Bruce ends up marrying Betty and he tries his best to keep that shadow aspect away from her. But she eventually finds out and he says, I thought our life together was going to be perfect. But the Hulk came back. He always comes back. This part right here is so powerful because that's exactly it. You can run, but you cannot hide. You can't use relationships or your career to hide from your shadow self because it is you. The closest thing any of us will ever get to being perfect and having a perfect life is owning up to all aspects of ourselves. How many of us suppress the shadow, the trauma, the rage, the sadness, and just focus on that career or that relationship that's going to fulfill us? This right here is an example of how you can achieve that idea of perfect and have it all crumble down because you wanted to turn your back on the shadow and act like it doesn't exist. So next we see how Betty was able to create a bond with Hulk. And we see a glimpse of this in the Avengers as well, when Natasha has that calming moment with Hulk and she feels his hand. So Bruce asked Betty, how did you get through to him, to the Hulk? And she says, well, you have the same soul. And he doesn't hate you. You hate you. Your demons do not hate you. You hate your demons. And you shame your demons and you don't show them love. So they act out like a bad child. Can a child really be bad? No. They act out because they're neglected and they want attention and love, right? Betty makes a great point in saying Hulk blames everyone else for attacking him. 
but you blame yourself for his creation. What this means is Hulk wants to be seen because he's only here because of the trauma from that radiation blast. That's not his fault, but Bruce wants to suppress the trauma and instead blame himself for his natural reaction to what he has experienced. He wants to blame himself for this physical being that he is now and act like it doesn't exist, act like it's a demon, but it's a result of something that he couldn't control, of something that happened to him. I really hope you guys are following with what I'm saying and how this relates to our personal traumas because it's definitely not restricted to severe situations like war and radiation blasts. Our shadow is created from any situation where we felt hurt shamed, embarrassed, humiliated, and feel the need to lock that door on any emotion that you perceive as negative. Our reactions and our emotions just are what they are, and the more we label them as negative and try to suppress them, the more that shadow inside of us builds and hulks out. And even with all this perspective that Betty is giving to Bruce, he's still like, well, shouldn't I blame myself? Didn't I create him? Because again, he's stuck in that loop. So we get back to the hotline conversation, and again, we see the cycle of Bruce blaming himself. No matter which way you spin it, it's his fault. Even though she says, Betty said you shouldn't blame yourself, so don't blame yourself for her death. Then he shifts it over to, well, if I died during the gamma blast, then none of this would have happened. And she only knew me for a day, so she would have gotten over it and married the guy she was with at the time, and she would have had an amazing life without me. And he just continues to go down the list of people that would have had a better life had he not been around. This illustrates the cycle of suicidal thoughts and how people really think that the world would be a better place without them, no matter what anyone else says. If you are one of those people, please, 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 Please remember that everything is a butterfly effect. You never know how your presence is affecting someone in a positive way. And you'll also never know how devastating it is for the people around you when you're not around, when you leave this earth. And you might think that may only pertain to family and close friends, but trust me, it affects people that you wouldn't even think would give you a second thought. So the comic ends with the villain here being Cal, who comes to assault the woman on the other end of the suicide prevention hotline, which Bruce overhears, so he hulks out and saves the day. And Betty thanks him and reminds him that if it wasn't for him being alive, then she herself would be dead right now. So lastly, I want to talk about the union of Bruce and Hulk in Avengers Endgame. I understand for the Hulk mad, Hulk smash fans, it was disappointing because that's what they want to see. A lot of fans were like, what the fuck? He doesn't even want to smash? He's just out here fake angry? What? What? What is this? So, you know, people didn't like the idea of the mentality of Bruce being in Hulk's body and that's it. But he says in the movie that he's been treating the Hulk like a disease something to get rid of but then he started looking at him as the cure this is literally the approach that we take when facing our fears and our shadow side literally stop looking at them as monsters because your shadow just wants to be acknowledged and loved and i know i sound like a broken record with this but i just really want that message to be clear and not just go in one ear and out the other because we all have a shadow no matter who you are. I also love the scene when he chooses to put on the gauntlet and he says, the radiation is mostly gamma. It's like I was made for this. This was showing his full acceptance of who he is, how he switched that victim mentality of what did I do to deserve this? He finally accepted that this physical scar and wound from that gamma blast wasn't something to suppress and shame. And as a result, he saw this as a part of his purpose. And if you look back at Bruce before this union, he wasn't this happy-go-lucky guy. He always felt lost and shamed as Bruce. So no, this new Hulk isn't just Bruce running in the mind of the Hulk. It's the union of the two. So that's my analysis and recap of Bruce Banner, the Hulk and how the Hulk is really a representation of our subconscious and our shadow self. I hope you guys find the strength to give your inner Hulk compassion and love because I know it's not easy, but you can do it, okay? And I am rooting for you. So the last thing I want to say is my heart goes out to all the soldiers in battle right now in any country. I don't agree with war at all. 
no matter which country it's coming from. You know, it's a devastating and scary time for a lot of people. So I want to send my love to anyone who has loved ones out there and I'll be praying for peace for all the soldiers out there. All right, butterflies, thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you next time. Stay flying free.